Hello everyone, this is Ilmo Clemente, your presenter for today's webinar. I am an InfoPath developer and UI expert here at Kidabra. I've been here for almost seven years now. And I love ever since designing beautiful InfoPath forms for customers, aiming satisfaction all the way. And so for today, we're going to talk about how to control user experience in the browser. For today's agenda, I'm excited to show you what UX is or what user experience is all about. I'm going to give you a brief overview on that. And of course, I'd, I'd be happy to share some tips and tricks that I, I've learned through out my InfoPath experience myself. And of course, I'm excited to show you some cool InfoPath forms that we've built for our past customers. That's for our show and tell. And to start, let's talk about what UX is. UX is a short term for user experience. It actually is a user's overall satisfaction level when using your product or system. And in our case, InfoPath forms, right? If it's a good experience, they're happy. And if it's a bad experience, your customers or your user's tendency is not to come back to the form at all. And most of us are small or big organizations dealing with internal forms, right? We, can, we create internal forms for our, for our employees, for example, for our colleagues. And so those are our target users. And we just want to make sure that they enjoy their InfoPath forms experience as they fill out these internal forms for us, right? Okay, and how do we do just that? We'll ask ourselves these questions when we're building our InfoPath forms. What will their experience be? Will they be able to simply use the form or will it require some training, right? So you as the InfoPath designer have an intimate knowledge of how the form should work. So you should always think about how the users will be able to use your forms. Will they be? Will they have trouble doing so and whatnot? Just like what you're seeing here on the picture and this slide, it looks to me like she's having trouble using something on her machine, right? And I would assume that she's having trouble filling out the form and that's not what we want. And so for our general tips and tricks, these bullets apply to either InfoPath filler forms or browser forms. Um, on the left here, we uh, these are the best practices. We've been showing you this in our past webinars and our past trainings to those of you who were able to attend those. And over the right here are just uh, some implementations and how you can apply those, those um, best practices, right? And I'm not going to go through each one of these. I guess I'll just give a quick um, overview of, of these guys, right? So simplicity uh, is beauty. You want to keep things simple and maintain some logical flow. For example, step one, name goes first before the address, things like that. So step one goes first before step two and all that. And data validation, you know, how to make use of rules and conditional formatting so that users would know when they get an error, right? Just showing some correct error uh, message there when they do encounter them. Um, some color contrast, highlighting, or emphasizing on the more important items than the less important ones. Of course, you, you always want to show help text where possible, guidance text. Uh, making them dynamic is another cool uh, technique, something like adding um, a question mark icon or a button somewhere in the field near the field so that when the users click on those uh, buttons they'd see some guidance text um, corresponding to that control what to, what to do with that field right um, let's see our data driven technique is what we always advise customers to practice this way they get data from another source a secondary data source such as an XML or a SharePoint list or even from SQL and that way the forms pre-populated with the, uh, with the information that is not necessarily needed for the user to fill out him or herself, right? Um, we're going to show you a bunch of samples with the hide and show sections technique. This uh, controls what focus you're, you want to show your current users, what page or what part of the process you want to show your users. And so let's just talk about browser because today we we're, we're, we said that we're going to talk about how to control user experience in the browser specifically. So here are some tips and tricks. 
um, first, we want to focus on optimizing performance, right? And how do we do that? We want to control postbacks. Postbacks are, you know, that spinning icon, the loading icon that sends the data to the server on, on every switch of a field or or control, we can actually control those. And some users are really annoyed when they have to like fill out a certain field and move on to the next. The form would send data to the server every now and then. It just is a pain for some users. And we're gonna talk about how you can actually manipulate that. So sections versus views is another discussion that has been ongoing. I prefer using sections myself. Kudaba recommends sections versus views, and I'll talk about why later during the demo. And we also want to reduce the data entry time, and I've, I've uh, talked about this briefly in the previous slide. So the data-driven technique populating fields where necessary so that the users won't need to enter data each and every time when you can actually pull certain data from somewhere, right? So yeah, if a user goes into the form and the less the less time or the less times that the user would enter data, the, the better, right? That's what's more preferable. So show, le show less content. This actually also has something to do with optimizing performance. We know that a lengthy form loads slower than a short form, right? So we just want to simply hide and show those sections that are not really part of the current process. For example, if I'm dealing with a form that is new, I'm not gonna show the approval section, right? So things like that. Uh, paging is also a good practice. It's a, it's a cool technique as well. For example, if you're retrieving data from a SharePoint list with a long list of items, right, you maybe want to show the first 20 items only on the first page and on a right, on, on a click of the right button, right, a button that's pointing to the right, it's gonna show the next 20 items and so on and so forth. So those are just some quick tips and tricks. I have a lot more, I'm sure, as I go through my demo, which is gonna happen right about now. <laughs> and let's see here. I know that we're talking about browser forms, but you see, I can't get my... toolbar to show. Yeah, I just wanna show you this form in the filler. Uh, let me see if I can do this correctly. All right, I know we're talking about browser forms, but this is a simple, a very, very simple InfoPath filler form that I can't resist showing you. This is an email form. Our goal is to send this to our customers, to our loyal customers, because we were giving out free t-shirts. And we just basically wanted to get their information. What size do you want? What gender? So we do have different sizes for male and female, right? Um, yeah, and so I am, as a, as a user, if I'm a Cadabra's customer, I just open the form and select my gender here, select my size, enter my address, right? Uh, whatever, <laughs> and the zip here, actually pulls the information for me. If I type in my zip and tab out, it auto populates the city and the state for me. I don't have to type in manually my city and might select my state as well. And the state dropdown actually pulls a list of abbreviated states from an XML file. Let me try that once again. Let me try another zip here and tab out. So it changed the city and the state based on the zip that I entered. So once I'm done with all that, I just need to submit my form and that's done. So a total good user experience. It's It might not be simple with the coloring. It's, it's a little bit high contrast for me there, but the filling out was swift, right? And we also got some cool stuff going on with the God forms here. It's actually a picture button that shows the Kriaber's definition. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that for the simple form that is actually straightforward. And now let's move on to my sample browser forms here. Just move my go to webinar control panel over to the right. So here is one of our customers' forms. It doesn't actually look like an info path form. You would think that it's a it's a web web form, right? And if I do this, you know expand my, my window there. It actually floats over the 
on top of that background image, which is really cool. And that's this UI side, just wanted to show you. Um, so it looks like a web page. I've got some links going on over on the left here. They look like link, but they're actually buttons, picture buttons. So I can go ahead and enter my information here like so, but it's going to maybe take me 30 seconds to a minute to fill those out. I can, you know, I'm just going to look for my part number, my job number, whatever. But since I'm providing, the designer provided me this convenience to just type in a code number and query, the form does query then the information corresponding to that code number which is right now you're seeing sending data to the server. This was what I was talking about. It actually is necessary for this form specifically because it's trying to retrieve some data from the server and so to return us the correct data we want, we really need to send that to enable postback in this case. I'll show you some examples where we don't actually need to do that. Like here in the purchase commitment page, so switching there, and I think that my connection to the VPN service is slowing things down here. So please bear with me. Um, okay. All right, so we've got our purchase commitment tab or page. And the, the next step for me is to select an answer to each of these questions, which as you notice, for each answer I select in this dropdown, it goes sending data to the server, which is why let's find out so all right it looks like it did that just to return my alias as being the com the person who completed this and the current date of completion right let me try that again selecting no this time let's see what we get so i'm waiting as a user i'm waiting i'm waiting just for that it's not what we want i'm going to be annoyed with this form i'm going to choose not to fill this out now and just go back to it later when I have more time. So what you want is to actually maybe add a refresh button at the at the top here, somewhere here, a refresh button that only sends the data once, all at once, and it populates the completed by here with my alias, whichever I answered, whichever question I answered, and auto populates the date completed. So let's see and let's look for an example. Um, so this one is another customer form, and I've blurred out the, the logo there for security purposes. So these have option buttons on the right here. This is a survey form. And notice that when I answer, I don't get any postbacks at all. So I can keep answering this. And in fact, there's something going on behind the scenes. I am supposed to get some sub questions for all no answers here. And I'm not seeing them yet because the form hasn't sent data to the server yet. And also I don't see any scores yet because again, we're not sending the post back yet. But once I click on this refresh button, it's gonna do that, do its thing once, only once and return the results to me all at once. And we'll wait for that. Um, at least the waiting is not like three seconds per option, bot uh, option button, right? It's going to like do this just like that. And so now I'm seeing my sub questions where I answered no. And if I scroll, oops, if I scroll a little bit, I see my score now, which is that's what we want. That's one technique that we want to apply. And I also talked about... Um, there were, there were items, there were bullets in that slide for my tips and tricks there where we want to disable the submit button until all the, all the uh, fields or the required fields have been filled out. And we actually show two different uh, techniques there. This, this is going to be the first technique where you enable the submit button regardless if the form's been filled out completely or not. And let's just answer uh complete all of the questions here just to make sure we're not missing anything because each question in this form is required so i'm going to attempt to submit without filling out those required fields let's see what happens
fields are missing. So I, um, I, uh, me as a user, you know, I would get a little bit annoyed with with what just happened. I clicked submit and I waited and just to find out that I'm not done completing the form. So what you actually want to do is um, just disable that submit button until all the required fields have been filled out, right? So until so the user would, wouldn't know what to do and, and then find find out that there's what's this red asterisk for. You can also provide a, some guidance text over here saying red asterisks are required fields or required fields are marked with red asterisks and whatnot. Something like this, right? So these are two, these two fields are required and I'm highlighting them aside from the red asterisk there. I'm highlighting them with the red, just, you know, it would catch the user's attention right on. And we are requiring these fields because this, um, the concatenation of the last name and the build address actually builds the file name, which is important. So I could save this form. So yeah, you would consider things like that to provide the best user experience for your user. And I'm at, actually on my third demo form here. This is the quality inspection report. Serves as a checklist for the builder and the inspector. So um, let me go ahead and fill this out. And we'll see that the highlight goes away because I've filled it out. Um, okay. All right, so I'm logged in. This is a new form, and I'm logged in as a builder. And notice that these check marks also don't send data, no postback. So the postbacks are disabled. And another cool trick is that to save users time checking all these boxes, I do have a but this builder header here is actually a button that when I click on it, marks everything as complete or checks all the boxes at once. And so now I can just do that and uncheck whatever I don't want checked, right? That saves me time. Let's look at the let's look at the other room here, the study room. So here I'll just do that again. If I click on the builder header there, it just checks everything for me. And again I can just untick whatever doesn't apply as complete here. So these are actually sections. These guys right here switches me to the section I want to show in the view to the user. Um, and this is what we're talking about, to, about keeping the length of the form as short as possible. That's why we use hide and show sections. And I'll show you the, I'll show you how things are done in the designer in a few here. Um, now if I switch, if I click on the summary, tab here or the summary button here it switches me to a separate view like literally view and you'll notice how how much time it's going to take for the sending data to the server and then switching to the view so that's that that's about sections versus views that's why we recommend doing sections instead of views and you'll see here in a minute how it switches to that view so it's done sending data to the server. Now it's loading the next view, which I'm not seeing anything right now. It's totally blank. If I'm the user, I'm going to panic. Where did my form go? Did I lose my changes? You know, so that's one gotcha with using views right now. The view is still rendering. So yeah, maybe some users would just close the browser right away. And yeah, there you go. Data loss right there. Okay, so the view finally loaded. It's actually really short here, but it took time for the view to render for some reason. And that's what we are trying to avoid. Okay, so that's it for my forms. Now let me show you how this form looks like when we got it from our customers, uh, from our customer before we've improved it. Because you know we are a consulting company, you know, customers come to us uh, to ask advice how to improve their forms or um, ask us to do the work for them, right? So this was how that form looked like when we first got it. Got it. Um, so you will look at this, let me just put this at the side. You will look at the buttons here. They're all hard-coded. Each section has its own button that switches, let me show the rules, 
that switches the tab. So set current tab to five when it's utility room. And if we, I go to the utility room, let's just use the entryway. Oops. Love info path. What happened? <laughs> okay, it's back here. Let's see. So it looks like InfoPath just threw up on me because this form is very, very long. There's a lot of content in this form. The designer, it's really not liking it. <laughs> so anyway, that's that. And if we look at the entryway, I think it hates me dragging something. So if we look at the entryway section, we see that it is hiding it's hidden if my current tab is not set to one where and the tab gets set to one if I click on the entryway button on the left navigation pane there and let me try to drag this one more time hopefully it doesn't throw up again all right so there's the rule and if we look at and all the questions here as you noticed it's all hard-coded like type manually written on this form and if I try to scroll down it's going to throw up. No. Ah, uh, yeah, it's going to freeze on me again. Okay. Let's have, I'm not sure what's going on with InfoBath now. I'm trying to scroll here, just showing you the entire length. It's really, really, it's a really, really long form with all hard coded questions. Um, so what did we do to improve this form? Let me just close it out now. Oh, one more thing that I wanted to show you is the schema. So we'll see you here on the left on the fields task pane. If I expand the entryway section, for example, it has a C1, W1, C2, W2 going on. Same goes with the study, lots of fields. Lots and lots of fields as you keep expanding. As you can see right there, so what we do, what we did to improve this, to normalize, we first normalized the data source, obviously, and let me show you the after version, the improved, totally improved version. So now, this is now a short form, no hard-coded questions. We're going to see just a repeating group over here. Um, there's your repeating group with just the question and the is complete checkboxes, no more C1, C2, W1, W2, whatever, just a repeating group. Normalized, very normalized, the buttons on the left only has one button, it's repeating, it grabs the question from the secondary data source. Yeah, so this form feeds the questions, the data basically from a secondary data source, which is an XML data connection, an XML file. If I show you that, this is going to be the questions, and if you look at the bottom here, it is an XML file. So if I want to edit one of the questions or any question there, I just go to my XML file and reattach it as a source file here in my form. And so everything here is data-driven, everything is dynamic. Designer sidewise, if you're the designer, it's a lot, lot easier to maintain, right? So um, yeah, that's that. And the postbacks are actually controlled here. If you look at this, uh, at, uh, at this checkbox, for example, look at its properties. If I go to browser forms, it's set to never. So I don't want to send the data to the server every time this box is checked or unchecked. So never send. Uh, the postback settings is set to never. That's what we want. And so in the summary view, because there's a calculation, um, there's a calculation logic in this form. Uh, it calculates the score, and if I just switch you to that view later, let me show you what summary does. Um, first, it calculates the. It sets my calculate attributes to one, just to trigger the rules in there. So we will we look at the calculate um, attribute rules. So we set the score which is the sum. So we know that I can keep ticking these boxes and then click of the summary button, that's when my score gets calculated. So we are actually doing things on demand rather than on the fly, right, in actual. 
So yeah, that's just one of the one of the cool tricks we've been implementing in our customer forms, targeting the aiming again for the best user experience in the browser. I also want to show you the other form that had the, the survey form that had the refresh button. Uh, yeah, the survey, this guy here. I want to show you what does refresh um, does. It actually does nothing. You'll be surprised. And I've opened it up in the designer. Let me pop this up. All right, and show the rules pane. So, again, these option buttons are set to not send the data to the server, so they are set to never. And then this refresh button actually does nothing. Just has a rule that says send data to the server, but it, it actually sets something, just one field in my form logic data source to nothing, right? And I'm doing that because I can actually just not do anything at all like that. But starting in InfoPath 2010, it's not allowing that anymore. You'll see this exclamation mark in my rule telling me that there isn't any action going on. And if I close this designer and I reopen it, this rule will go away. It will disappear. So to avoid that, we're just setting any random field that we're not using anywhere in the logic, such as this um, stop guy right here to nothing. So. Um, if we look at the button properties of this refresh button, now you'll see that under browser forms, I set, I, I said, I'm saying always send the data to the server on click. And that is the one responsible for all the recalculations, getting the update, the most, uh, the updated score there and showing my sub questions for each question where I said no. And that's it for the demo. Let me pop open my slide deck one more time. All right, so that's all for my show and tell demo. I hope you enjoyed that. And I am actually you want to show a lot more, but time's not allowing us. Um, yeah, do you have any questions for me? Let me look at the questions box here. I am not seeing any questions, and I hope that means that everyone everyone understood or everyone everything made sense here. If you do have any questions, just go ahead and shoot me an email. It's ailmill.clemente at qdabber.com, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. For the free stuff, I'd love to send you some samples. Um, I'll see if I can send you the samples that we've shown you today. Um, if you just go ahead and fill out the survey form, because it's fun, <laughs> uh, go ahead and fill that out, and we can send you our samples. Uh, if you're, if you, in case you have any other questions without the logic, um, with the logic going on in those forms, and you can tinker with them yourselves when you get the samples. And also, um, feel free to check our website at our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com/cadabra. If you ever miss some parts of this video. And for those of you who are not able to attend this webinar and are currently watching this YouTube video, um, go to our web store if you want to purchase the, the webinar kit with all the samples and the goodies that awaits. All right, so uh, for our upcoming webinars, we do have a bunch in store for you. Every week, the, these are free webinars. We do these for you because we want to share our knowledge or skills when in designing and dealing with InfoPath forms. So feel free to attend our weekly webinars. Uh, go to this link for more information on that. And thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. I enjoyed it. I love talking about InfoPath forms. I love sharing my my knowledge. All the Cool tips and tricks that I personally know that I've encountered and I hope to show you more in the next webinar. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye now.